So welcome everybody. Welcome to the Hot Song um, podcast. Today is March the 21st, 2024. And the topic for today is pot integration. So um, why this, how did I come up with pot integration? Um, because of a couple of things. I have, I have some, I know some people who um, I can see in their lives, certain things playing out in their lives. And um, so what I can see is that, oh, it's a part, meaning that there is an in, unintegrated part within their life that is causing the um, issues in their life. So, so that's one thing. And then once I have that, in my mind, um, so the next thing happened was um, Emilia Benz come up with a, a podcast and what she was talking about was that we are uh, fragmented because she, uh, her, so she says that, you know, we are one person. We have set of um, behavior when we are with, let's say, at work. And then when we get home, we have another different set of um, behavior that comes out. And then when we are with friends, certain friends we have, we are you know, one way with a different set of friends, we behave in a different kinds of way. And so all of these, like it's, even though we are the same person, but you know, under different um, situations, we behave differently. We may even dress differently. We may, um, so we, we do things a little differently. So it's as though we are schizophrenic <laughs> or maybe we have multiple personalities. And um, I find that in myself, that is quite true as well. Um, although I, it's less true now. I think I'm, I'm in the process of integrating myself so that I can be as authentic as I possibly can, no matter where I am, no matter who I talk to. However, that's just, that is still a process. I'm not saying that I'm always authentic. There are still some people, especially, um, I think when, when I'm with people that I knew long time ago, it's like, I, I seem to be, um, I would say compelled to, or it's more, most comfortable for me to revert back to that version, the version of myself that um, knew them from way back. So it's, it's actually easier for me to, to be that person rather than to be who I think I am or want to be in this moment. So, um, and like when the so when there are synchronicities like this, I know that okay, it's something that is that I need to look more into it. So um, actually, when I start to think about parts integration, uh, it becomes more and more interesting because um, I I learned part integration long time ago when I was when I was learning um, NLP. And um, within NLP, there is a, one of the techniques is, is parts integration, is that we have a part, we have part. And I know that, you know, usually when we um, go through a trauma or a very, I would say, um, a significant event, that's when it's most likely that we would create a part. So what is a part? A part is a a split off personality where um, when we are triggered, then it actually brings us right into that moment when we when we encounter the trauma, when we encounter that um, that significant event. So it's it's kind of like a part of ourselves because of that trauma be, um, and because of, uh, of what happened, that a part of ourselves become frozen. Um, and depending on how traumatic that event may be, sometimes we are um, 
a lot of our personality is being frozen by that event. Um, however, most of the time it's depending uh, if, it, if it's a lesser um, event than only a part of ourselves. And we would get triggered when a similar event to that significant event happens, then you know, you know, only certain people with a certain um, behavior would trigger us to be all of a sudden um, acting as though we were a, a frightened animal or, you know, deer in headlights that we are completely frozen. We don't know how to act or we act in such a way that is completely different from um, the rest of the time, how, how we are the rest of the time. So when that happens, when when certain things trigger you, certain events, certain people trigger you, then you know that, you know, yeah, you have a part that is um this in that has not been integrated back into your um into your life. So when you when that happens, when you get triggered, then that is, it brings all of the trauma back to you. Maybe not to the um, extent or the intensity of when it first happened, but you would not be able to act like yourself when that happened. So that's that's the part. So um, the way to integrate a part is to understand that the part, um, when when the part happens, the way you behave when you're in being triggered in that part is um, the part exists because it's trying to protect you. Because the way you react to that that situation. No matter how out of place or um, you know immature or uh, different from your personality, from from your regular personality, but all that, um, no matter what it is, you survived and because you survived. So that part is keeping all of that behavior together because that behavior allowed you to survive. The way you react allowed you to survive. So is to look at you know, why that behavior is the way it is. Um, for example, for myself, it's like <clears throat> for the longest time, um, whenever I am, I would say, in the public or in a large group of people, I would start to panic. Like, I may not, um, I may not um, look like I'm in panic mode, I may not, but internally, I can feel that panic. <gasps> Is that, oh, what am I going to do? So, um, and when I look at it, I, I actually um, looked at it for a long time. And when I looked at it, actually, it's because of a past life um, trauma that actually um, carried to me, to, to, to my um, consciousness till this lifetime. So that every time I am in a similar situation, of being in a large group of people, um, usually people that I don't know very well, then like that panic would start to come up. And um, I've been working with that part um, long enough that now I don't panic. Um, most of the time I don't panic. So uh, questions or So far.
So that part or the we go back to play that or we feel comfortable with the older friends because we created the history. And uh, is that a memory or is it a behavior or it's like our comfort zone? Or it is our uh, society, like when I go to work and uh, my work has put all this, like it has to look like this and your dress code and blah, and all those rules and regulations, we follow that. We are totally different person there. And when we are, like you said, we are different, different people and there. Isn't that a comfort zone or isn't that like... Uh, so if it, I understand there are some traumas like carried from the past life and it does like really put sometimes it's numbers on, on you. Like why I'm, I'm like this, like why I feel that way. Yes, we do work on that when we recognize that. But to living in this moment, going to work, uh, home, being a mother, being a neighbor and friend and all that. Isn't that we are playing a part of that character that what we society put it on us? Yeah. Very true. It's um, society has a certain um, expectations on us. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. That's a certain expectations on us. And depending on how um, comfortable you are with yourself or how integrated you are, um, it's, you don't have to live up to that expectation though. It's a choice. Is it not? It it is a choice. I agree. Uh, yes, like when when like I look at myself when I'm talking to myself. I uh, or um, when I'm talking to my family or my son. Right? There's no guards. Like I don't have any guards. It's like the way it is. The way uh, how I feel it. I just say it. And when we are in, in the friends, when I am in the friends, like like you said, new friends or whatever. Yes, I have to think that is this person is like how sensitive this person is. If I say this way, it might hurt them. Or if I see this way, then what the meaning behind my, my thoughts would be taken a wrong way. So isn't that we are protecting their feelings it's not like it's not ignorant like if i'm feeling that i there are some time like somebody say how's my hair today i can't say you look like a crap i, I can simply say yeah you like it that's fine it's good looks good <laughs> if you like it <laughs> right? so uh, it's it's i think we are looking at their Instead of looking at ourself, we, especially me, I'm talking about myself, it's my thought. Is when we are giving a response to somebody, I value their sensitivity and their feelings and what that will do, like from whatever it comes out from my mouth, how it's gonna hurt them. So I look at that and because to me, I don't care how you look, I don't care, but like if somebody says it's, for example, right? Yes, I do understand with your uh, parts or fragments, we we have scattered all over the place and we, we bring that part, this part to play that role. But it, it, it is nice to integrate everything. It's, it's, so I get confused is those fragments are part of our soul or those fragments are part of us. And if it's for us, then who are we? Like, who am I? 
if my soul is different and the fragment is different, my body is different, what I am really like, what I'm doing here, if it's not everything like, it's like a oneness, like if my soul is me, it's not my higher self, my like first, second or th third, whatever it is. Yes, those fragments has to come come together to make it one. But what is it? Is it a part of a soul? It is part of a, what? I don't know, consciousness, matter, body, memory. I have no idea. I am kind of confused. I look at the part like, like how we explain, okay, I'm with the, at work, I'm a different person. Is it like my, my part of my soul, my body, my consciousness here? And then my consciousness, like, is it like different, different compartments? And I just put it together where I'm going. I just take that compartment and then go there. Is it that? What is it? <laughs> Very good questions. Thank you for your, thank you for your questions. Yes. Um, it's so, so. It brings us to deeper questions. Um, the way I see it is that we, or at least, well, I, I can't say we, but I can definitely say I, have been conditioned to um, respond a certain way. Because I was taught that, you know, you want to be polite, you don't want to hurt other people, so that's that's what you do. And so I have certain judgments, and um, and you know, if somebody tells me, "Wow, don't you think she is beautiful?" <laughs> for me, my for my eyes, beauty means looking a certain way. And if that person does not look like the way that I expect, then in my opinion or in, in yeah in my judgment it's like eh, yeah if I want to be truthful I would say no that's ugly <laughs> but I can't say that because I was conditioned to not say that at least not out loud anyways however what I think of as beauty is just it's all a condition anyways because um I've been programmed by the Hollywood standard of beauty. It was like in um, for that for that that I mean from that standard, I am definitely not beautiful. Nowhere even near it. So like when I look at myself, that that judgment ugh, is like so. Yes, did that create a part? Absolutely. And I've been working on. Um, integrating that as well so my own sense of what beautiful or what beauty is it's changing and morphing as I work on integrating myself so that I um so that you know what makes me judge something is good or bad or beautiful or ugly is starting to be more integrated to something that's closer to who I truly am rather than who um, the, the, the society has or the um, other people has um, think that it is the norm. Like the norm is you know, if you have certain features or if you are certain weight a certain height then you consider beautiful well, that's just it's a norm a norm is nothing more than a socially agreed or a socially acceptable measurement but that has nothing to do with who i truly am mm -hmm. so the, the 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 process of becoming one with myself is to start to let go of all these, um, I would say, 
all these different standards mm -hmm. that has been that is from outside. Because when I truly look at like within myself, do I care? No, mm -hmm. not really. Mm -hmm. Do I have to look a certain way? No, not really. I think the, um, so what is more important to me is, am I healthy? Am I able to um, do the things that I wanted to do? So that is more important to me than, you know, do I look a certain, do I weigh a certain amount or, or do, am I, you know, tall, am I a certain tall skin of my color or, you know, color of my hair, those things? Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's what I mean by, you know, when we, so the more you integrate and back to yourself, um, then the more you would be able to not be fragmented. You would be able to, when someone asks you, do you, do you like this? You would be able to actually see it as okay yeah i like and 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 really be able to say what is true for yourself so mm -hmm. like if somebody asked me you know am i beautiful now then i would be able to to say you know yeah you're beautiful and truly mean it, not because it's polite to say. Because my own standard of beauty is more integrated now than as before. So, so that I can always be me and not have to think, oh, okay, do I want to say this? Or do I want to be diplomatic? It's when you when you really inter more integrated than um, you can truly say what is on your mind without having it be something that is going to offend someone else. And even if you offend someone else, um, you will understand that it's not because of something that you say. It's because some people choose to be offended, no matter what you say. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, even if you don't say anything, they are offended. They are just so. It's so. That's that is um, more of, um, that's more what I mean. And mean? How, how we know that all the fragments are back? Like how do, how do I know that if it's, is it like our thoughts or like do we have to check back and forth? It, like it, is, it, is it my thought or am I judging or not? But then again, could be that, that that's how my standard is. That's not my judging. So how do we know it's right or wrong? To even think that, like, do you know what I mean? Well, you know that it is a, if you have a reaction, if you, have, if you feel triggered, then you know you need to look at it. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's short answer. When you feel triggered, when you feel that, okay, someone say something and you're, you immediately snap into a certain behavior that, that is um, that you usually don't behave that way mm -hmm. 
Got it. Thank you. I know when I'm triggered. <laughs> Cause I like it was it would be like um when I when I'm triggered, it would be like eh. <laughs> I would just feel um how should I say the most recent time that I was triggered was when someone else was um talking about trying to teach a subject and the way the person teach a subject lets me like I let me know that you know they know nothing about it <laughs> yeah they absolutely are clueless they're trying to teach something teach someone else and you know I get I got triggered <laughs> like, for me it's like I have it that if you don't know what you're talking about, don't talk. <laughs> so that's, so I know. <laughs> Maybe it's their reality. Who knows? <laughs> it's... Maybe it's their reality. But, you know, that's something that I need to look at myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's their problem. It's my problem. <laughs> I got triggered. <laughs> so I have, I have a part that says I am the super teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to make like I have to talk. <laughs> I have to know what I talk, what I'm talking about. No, you are so excellent. When other people don't don't know what they are talking about, it's like I take offense. <laughs> <laughs> I get triggered. <laughs> I have no patience for for that. <laughs> and when yeah. I hear people who absolutely know what they they talking oh. about, I'm just I love it. Like those are the people that I want to learn from. I don't even have to agree with them. I just know that, oh, okay, they are talking, and they know what they are talking about. I, I respect that. But when mm -hmm. somebody talks and they have no idea what they're talking about, and they don't care, they're just talking because they want to talk, then I have <laughs> no respect whatsoever. So... So they, they they are probably in a different frequency at the lower level or higher level, God knows. So because their free frequency and your frequency does not match. Because like I said, it's their reality. But uh, coming back to you, you are excellent teacher. I have gained so much knowledge and I'm happy. I wait for Thursdays and Saturdays for sure. I agree. Hungry percent. Yes. Thank, Thank you very you. much for buttering me up for for saying. No, no, no. It's a reality. Okay. I I got my all the fragments together. For me you. too. <laughs> I yeah. I, no diplomacy in there. I'm not at work. Okay. <laughs> yes. I I I lost my. <laughs> cool from from that and i'm triggered because of that uh, incident and i know it's something that i needed to um that i needed to to look at so that's homework for me to do so my my own standard is you know he's talking but he does not know what he's talking but other people are listening to him <sighs> And it's their choice. It's not mine. It's not mine to disagree with. So that's 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 what I I wanted to look at in myself. So it's it's nothing wrong with the the other person. I mean, we like. Do I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Absolutely not. I try to do as much um, preparation as I can, but you know. Am I am I a hundred percent right? I don't know. I just know that I am right. I, I I believe I'm right in this moment, and I try to say what truly is tr is real for me. That does not mean that it is the truth. It's just the truth that I know of now. Um, you know, a few years from now, or maybe even a few months from now, when I learn something different, when I know better. And I look back at these, I would say, he has no idea what she's talking about. 
that would be good. I would like that. That means I have learned. So, um, so the what I was okay. So, did I answer your question about pots? Yeah, but like the same thing, like even a general life, like when I look at it, if somebody asked me, oh, you made that decision at that time. I said at that time when I made that decision, that's how much I knew. And that time I made that decision, that was the best decision I could make in that, those circumstances. So I don't regret it. Yes, if I have to do it again now, now I know a little more, I would do totally different way. But at that moment, I made it. That's how much I knew, and that was the best decision I made. So it's like it comes up here, there, sometimes that, that this is my, and it's my belief too, because whatever the decision I made today, I made it with the best ability of mine, what I know at this moment. So that's why I made the decision. Who wants to make a wrong decisions? Nobody. That's how much the, we know. Like I knew at that time. So, mm -hmm. so I don't go back. I wish I could do this. I wish the wishes is whatever. No, it was the best. Move on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It's from this moment on. I totally, right. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Yes, I have one. Would okay. heart integration means that um, we would we would integrate our souls to our soul would help actually integration of our soul since we 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 lose or we share parts with other of, of the soul with other moments in life or with people or I don't know if I'm clear enough um, I don't quite understand the question can you expand on it a little bit more um you want to know how or what what is it how uh yeah i want to know how yeah <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, the the fact that you know we we the soul fragment fragmentation how do we integrate it? That's what actually my question is. Okay, thank you. So how? Yeah. It's, it's like it's, it's a, a bringing our uh, higher self merged in all those the, the fragments, what we have, little soul here, like then the higher vibration and the soul coming a one from the start to now. That's what she's probably trying to say. Yeah, something like that too. Yeah, you could say I that. Two after there. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm i going to go into the how um, in a little bit. So so hold hold on to that question. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering... Um, my understanding of, of like the parts is um, it's the shadow side that I don't see. And the, the time that my, that that shadow side shows itself is the times that I get triggered by somebody and it doesn't have to be huge, huge. But if, if I'm feeling really un uncomfortable about something somebody said or something somebody did, then that's the time I could go away and look at this and try to figure out what was it about that, what they said or what they did that really bothered me. And not on the first level, but you know, three or four questions in, 
what's really bothering me about what exactly that person did. And those times that, that I was triggered, those that's exposing to me the shadow side that I don't see. That, that I don't I don't recognize a lot of times. And when I think about going to work and I being a different person, that's not the same thing because that's a choice you're making. You're making a choice to work at this place that asks you to do this kind of thing. And and, and you're doing that because that's a choice you make to, be, to work in that job or whatever. But the, the times that you're being triggered, this is something that's sort of a negative, a negative energy and it's bringing about a negative part of you. Is that sort of the idea? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, thoughts is. Well, let, let me put it this way. In order to survive in, um, in, in the matrix, in the old matrix, I should say, the inverted matrix, um, it, it encourages us to create parts, to be fragmented. Um, a part can be as subtle as just choosing something, choosing to only behave a certain way. To the most, uh, I would say the most extreme case is a, you know, multiple personalities. Those are more um, extreme cases. Those, you know, definitely there's trauma involved like severe trauma involved right. so it can be a very mild um fragmentation or it could be the other extreme is completely separate um personalities in order to handle the situation so yes there like I'm, I'm putting everything into parts but actually there is very right um is that there are really you know simple choices all the way to you know you have completely no idea that you know of this other personality actually exists right yeah yeah so that's the and um yeah okay thank you <laughs> okay thank it's you compl it's complicated thank yeah thank you for um yeah just just emphasizing that is yes um there are things that you for example like you're one person when you're at work and then different when you're at home yes that's that may not be something that needed to it may not be in in regular living However, if you want to grow your consciousness, then that is something that you need, you still need to look into. Because the fact that you have to only show a fragment of yourself, like only show a fragment of yourself and, 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 and not the totality of who you are in different situations um, is... I, I would say it's not, it's not it's, yeah it's it's not a hundred percent um congruent so ideally you want to get to the point where you're so integrated yourself that you won't put yourself in a job that requires you to do that Right, right. Ideally, can do we need to do that right now? Not necessarily. It's something to it depending. It's depending on how um, what standard you want to hold yourself to. So if you, so let's let's just leave it at that. Okay. Yep. Any other any other clarifications, questions? Okay. So <laughs> um there's more to to talk about about parts because 
if you if I really am um if I really am truthful truthful about it is that um growing our consciousness is really about past integration because when you are completely one with your true self you will understand that you are all and everything you don't need to maintain any part anymore um are we there yet definitely no we are still um at the point where we are growing our consciousness so we are just now getting to the part where we are looking at how to integrate all the different fragments of ourselves. So the process of integrating ourselves um, is really the process of growing our own consciousness. So that's the way I see it. So okay so let me just put that put it out there ultimately we would get back to the part where we become um, one with creation again when we don't and we know that we are everything and every um all of creation we are at one with the sea the sky and everything right now no <laughs> I definitely don't think I'm the sea. <laughs> definitely don't cannot see myself being part of the sky yet. Um, but I do know that, you know, that is the process. One day, I don't know how long it's gonna take, one day we'll get there. So and that's that's where we are going. But it's gonna take us a long time to get there. Well relatively long let's put it that way <clears throat> and now um i just actually want to so how do we integrate ourselves to uh, go, go back to it. the the second part of this is how do we integrate our back to ourselves is um a long time ago i learned the nlp way and then now that when I'm doing the, the more um, consciousness work, I know of other ways to do that. So I'm going to talk about the NLP way first, because that's the more 3D way of doing it. I will start there, yeah, for the time being, and then um, go on to expand more later on. So, so... How to integrate. So a part usually has a personality. Has a personality. So um, the part, so for example, there's a part of me that is very much the, the, the daughter of my mother. There's a part, that's, that's part of me. And then there is also another part of me, which is the eternal part of me and um and the part of me that identify as my mother's daughter has a certain characteristics i let's say my name is winnie and i'm winnie from the family louis and i speak a certain language i eat a certain food I behave a certain way, which is all consistent with me being the my mother's daughter. That's that's one part. And then the other part is the eternal me. The eternal me does not have a name. It's a consciousness, no name. And um believes in different things completely outside of um, the the confines of my mother's daughter part um, believes that I am eternal. Believes that you know my body is temporary, and that um, I'm only here. That the body is only here. However, I can be anywhere and everywhere. So, they're the two parts. 
Okay. <clears throat> so now, so how do we integrate the two so that the human me, or the, the part that is that ident identifies as my mother's daughter and the part of me that identifies as being the eternal, I am. How do they come together to be integrated? Is, is to you know, really understand that. Why do I choose to be my mother's daughter? There's a reason. And understand that that reason is for my highest good. And why do I identify as the eternal me? Because there's a part of me that really believes that that is for my highest good. And um, start to really understand the part of me that behaves like I am my mother's daughter has a reason and a logic that is for my highest good. While I'm here playing this playground, in this playground, I have to, that it is advantageous for me to feel like and behave like I am my mother's daughter and to, and that also look into the other part is the eternal me is also here to work with the part of me that identifies as my mother's daughter. And that those two actually comes together for a purpose to ensure the safety of my body so that I can be able to walk amongst human beings and have a human experience. And at some point, these two identities actually have a common goal. And when you realize that the part of you, that the, the different parts of you actually have a common goal, then those two can integrate. And when they come together, when you really recognize that there is a common denominator for those two parts for, to come together, and then they can come together and you can integrate that and take that in. So that's how you integrate the parts. Can you guys feel that? No, I, I'm not really feeling it. Okay. So you said that integrate, it means just you accept it and, you know, bring it to yourself or So, um, do you have a part? Part? Yep. Do you have a part? Do you have a part of you that you would like to integrate back? I don't know. I never thought about it. And it, it, it is, I got this idea we have parts. Yes. Then, then, 
that means that how how can we integrate back to the whole? So just let's say I know we have we have a body, we have a soul. That is so suppose is eternal. So parts it's what we miss. Parts it's the soul, right? So not the our body. <laughs> I, I, I suppose. Then when when we have trauma, we have for uh, some um, events we split. So okay. Yeah. So yeah. first thing is to first first thing is to identify the part first. So I think um oh you can identify the part. You can identify the part. How? Yeah. Um, I know there is a part for myself. The, the part of me that believes I am my mother's daughter. That is a part. I know that for myself. That is a part. So that's that's really from my own experience. I know that that is a, a part because I've well, struggled not. with this for a while. So that's why. So for someone else, you have to. Um, identify the part. So. How do you identify the part and what triggers you? Do you have a trigger that when that happens, you just are not yourself? Your behavior is not yourself. In, uh, in Chinese scene, everybody have san hun qi pai. I, that that means the soul have uh, different parts. And uh, when we was young, if one of us have a high fever, like my grandma will go outside, and uh, she will try um uh, hold my leg in that straight corner. <laughs> something so <laughs> means my I lost my soul so she's going to pull me back I know that <laughs> that's a tradition a loss uh, in modern uh, uh, times but I do remember she doing that when, like when somebody when one of us have a high fever, very sick, she will do that. I don't know, it's related. I, 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 not. and also in the, in the stories of all the Chinese uh, stories, somebody, they know people when a person is, uh, that, but uh, the soul will be going under reincarnation. But if you're doing something really, really, really extreme, um, it, 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 there is a raise for that. That means your soul will be destroyed. So. <laughs> So I know those. So I, I I have this idea, but I don't know how to connect. Okay. <laughs> so very simply, 
There's a part of you that wants to be healthy and there's a part of you that is keeping the illness or whatever it is that is um, not allowing you to become healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that is one way of this because usually when we have an illness um there's a part so when they have our illness body. it's our part that doesn't want to be healthy yeah yeah um in i'm i'm not saying a hundred percent of the time but it is possible that A lot of the times we don't get well, it's because um, for us to get well, it means we have to give up the part of ourselves that um, And it's hanging on to the behavior that is keeping us ill. Isn't that the, the, then again, how we say if somebody gets sick and then we're saying, you are sick because you did not cover your head, you went in the cold and this happened, that happened. So that's why you got sick. So now you have to take medicine. So how do we know that? Because I think it's like a body reacted to that condition and we got or to any viruses because that's how we got sick. How do we give our part in that, that process? I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... So, for example, if we get ill, if we continue to be ill, mm -hmm. because the illness keep us low vibration. Okay. Because when, you don't, when yes. you don't feel, when you don't feel, when you don't have energy, when you don't feel um, good about yourself, how can you have high vibration? Mm-hmm. But if you have high vibration, and it means that you, um, you just being you is going to threaten the people around you. Hmm? You have a high vibration, but you will threaten people around you? Because the people around you, unless they themselves want to um, become better as well, oh, then, those okay. people, then those people will welcome you. But the people that don't want to get better, they just want to be who they are. They don't want to, um, they don't want to get better. Then they, they feel threatened by you, especially if they are family. Because they will try to put you down. They will try to um, be mad at you. And so not because anything you do is wrong. Just because energetically they sense that, you know, yeah, it's diff there's a difference. And they will try to bring you down. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah what do, you do? what do you do if you get better you're going to lose your family it's so what do you, do? you make a choice to keep yourself ill 
that's one choice. Or you get to the point where, you know what? I'm okay with my family. Um, knowing my family is where they are and I don't mind losing them. I know that, you know, um, my soul has chosen to become higher vibration. I'm going to honor my soul rather than trying to fit in with my family. That is a big part of the uh, spiritual community. I know my friends do. So that's why I want to bring up the, the about us is um, I'm not telling you what you need to do. I'm just telling you if you want to integrate the past, that's some, that's how do you do it? Whether you decide to integrate or whether you decide to not integrate, that is not my choice. I'm giving you the tool and you make the choice. That's all I'm doing. Can you repeat how you integrate the parts? How to integrate the part. Number one, identify the part. Know the part. And usually if you have an illness, then... Um, feel into it. What does that illness make you feel? And who you are when you are, when you have this illness. Okay, um, especially if, let's say, um, there's a lot of times when, you know, someone who is trying to um, work towards their goal, and when they get an opportunity, all of a sudden they would have an illness that's going to keep them um, away from achieving their goal or if they got their goal, but they, um, some, something else happened. Um, a lot of people, let's say they, they managed to create a, a, a um, really profitable business. And then they would have, for whatever reason, they have an accountant or an employee that is, um, going to take the whole business down then you know that you know what there's a part of them that actually allow that to happen because there's a part of them that really don't want them to succeed not because they're bad it's just because there's that part within their energy field and so that's how the um, reality, um, how they experience the reality. So when I have part of me that doesn't want me to succeed. <laughs> now I get it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> that's called self-sabotage. Yes. Yeah, that means a part of you, for whatever reason, is causing things to happen in your life to make sure you don't succeed or don't succeed in the way that you want it to. It's a part. So how do you deal with that? So why do I need to integrate this part? I have to release it, no? can release it. Hmm? It's a part of you. How can you release it? Hmm. You have to integrate it back. So 
So now you know what I'm talking about, what a pot is. So you identify the pot. You identify the pot. And um, identify the pot. And also, um, the, the best way is to imagine that pot as a, give it a personality. So for me, what I did was mother. So my mother's daughter, that's how I identify that pot. So I know that's a part of me that, um, that I've inherited from my mother. Not saying that my mother is bad. I chose to inherit those parts. So it's, it was my choice. But that's a part of me that you know has my mother's energy in it. So that's how I identify that part. So when you identify that part and you give it a personality, it, it usually is somebody that you know and is close to you. Because we get our um, identity from people near me. The, not necessarily our parents. It could be a friend. It could be someone else that we know a long time ago. So identify that part. Okay? I think it's my grandma. Identify that part. And then understand that you are not just that part. You are a lot more than that. So the other, so use one hand to personify that part. And then the other hand is who you are and who you want to be as well. So that's your main character, okay? And then what you do is you talk to both. So I know that I adopted those characteristics because I want to survive. Because my mother taught me how to survive. So I learned that. And those characteristics is not there to harm me. The underlying, um, the underlying reasons why I adopted and created that part is for my own good. So you have to know that each part that we create is, we think of it, we may think of it as being a self-sabotage, but it's actually because a part of us actually believed that that is going to keep us safe at one point in our life. That's why we adopted that. So isn't that the, again same thing like when when we hear from day one, you have to be sufficient, you have to be rich, you have, because you're living in that society and your name. Isn't that the same thing, the conditioning of the everything? your parents, your family, everybody, like even the society or the family you are born in. So because I I remember Jenna was saying like, we pick our family before even we come to work on certain things in, in our personality or uh, to improve our vibration higher because we have to go through that those lessons and we have to recognize and we have to work on it isn't that same thing you are saying similar to it so what i'm saying is that yes at one point in our lives we adopted those things but that doesn't mean it is um still true today Today, because the energies are changed or we grew in a 
different ways or we are more conscious about it or or that like we have the opportunity now since the the old energy is gone and new is here so we are really going like all of the above all the above all okay of the above okay 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 got so it we adopt we adopt those um, characteristics or we adopt that um, because at the time it was necessary. Mm -hmm. But just because it was necessary, you know, way back when does not mean that it is still for our benefit right now. So, so I'm you basically, that. basically you are saying, so we left the dial mode of the phone so now it's touch phone we have to go back to the touch phone now because change right um we we are never the same right we're never the same so um yeah we are never the same so who you are is who you choose to be and we have actually more, we have, there are tools that we can use to facilitate, to integrate the parts of ourselves that um, is no longer useful. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So the tools right now we have, do they work like, uh, you know, it's it's nice you brought it that because when we look at uh, the numerology, astrology, it, it's like old and older ways to working with the numbers and all that. It does it work now because since the energy change or the method or the tool is the same, but the energies are different in in those numbers or the combinations or whatever, does it oh. work or not? I don't know. Okay. How do we know yeah. then if it does work? So, so let's say numerology, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. um, like I know the old people has, like they've come up with, okay, a two means something, a three means something, blah, blah, blah. Right. So you take it on. You look at it. Mm -hmm. Does it still resonate with you? If mm -hmm. it still resonates with you, then it is still relevant for you to play with. Okay. I can't tell you what's right or what's wrong for you. No, 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 not for for only me. I'm talking about the journal, like since it's like old tool to go through the life or the lessons or to find the remedies. Does that work in this this vibration or this time? Since the, all the tools are changed, are the tools are same vibration changed or it's new tools because it, it carries in the new vibration? Or how we look at it. New tools are, are available. I see. Okay. However, that does not mean that the old tools are not useful. Okay. Everyone is different. Mm -hmm. So you have to, I can't say that like an old tools is, you know, forget about it. I can't say that. All right. Because some people... For some people, they need to learn as a base the old tools. Mm -hmm. And from that, then they can develop and incorporate new ones. So it's not up to me. All right. So yeah. you know what? We're going, to, we're going to learn the new tools from you so we can fly instead of uh, doing the tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> and I am only giving you the tool, whether yes. you buy with it or not. That is up to you. So, right. Vinny, you put in one hand your part, what you want to integrate, and the other hand, real you. It's you, yeah. 
So what you do next? So you talk to them. You understand you talk, that it's you not you. Each one. You talk to each one. Okay. You talk to each one and you really understand that. Like I like from my heart. Like when I was doing that, when I was demonstrating that for you, I was actually really feeling it. I was feeling the love that I have for the part of me that identifies as my mother's daughter. And I really understand that I did that out of love because I want to survive. And I know my mother wanted me to survive as well. So that's what she taught me. So it is out of love. It's for my highest good. And who I am right now, the bigger part of me is also for my highest good. Because I'm here playing on this playground. And once I understand that, know the part, it may be inconvenient. I may not like it. However, it was created out of love. So you just understand that it's out of love. And you don't hate it. You don't try to get rid of it. You just uh, let the part know that, yes, I understand you. I know that it's all done out of love. And you invite that part to also realize that it is doing and behaving whatever way it, it is behaving because out of love. However, you are in charge now you are more mature now you have all the experiences now and you invite that part to come back in and to integrate with the whole so that it does not have to be out there trying to to you know get triggered and distract you so you integrate that part back and when you do that, when you consciously talk and really understand the, the reasoning behind that part, the part will understand, oh, it's out of love. I don't have to be this maverick out there by myself anymore. I can come back in. It's safe. So then naturally it will come back and you so how do you feel that. that it come back so uh, you have to talk until you feel that love to that part yeah when and you, then you connect your hands i did and not put it on I your heart not, uh, i i did not um force my hands to come back together they naturally came back together on their own as I consciously um, understand the part and talk to the part. Mm. So it will come back. It will choose to integrate. And then you put it to heart. And then you... And then it's just, it just is natural because when those two, when the parts starts to come back, you visually see it. Your unconscious mind will integrate that and you would feel it, or at least I felt it. Now I get it. Thank you. And you naturally want to bring it in because it's a part of you. It's just something that is so natural. It's a part of you. So you want to bring it back in. Interesting. So it's really about identifying the part. And then also understand that it is for a purpose, not that part was created. And when you understand that, when you really consciously 
take that in that understanding, oh, it was created at one point for my own good. And now you have grown, you are matured, and you know, and you choose to integrate that part back in. So it does not have to be out there on its own trying to fend for itself. And then when it comes back, you feel a sense of wholeness or more wholeness than before. And from that, just from that, things will start to change. Behavior will start to change. Because you chose to integrate that part. I will try to do that. It's interesting. Other questions, comments? Thank you, Vinny. You're welcome. <laughs> Have I completely lost you guys? <laughs> <laughs> we are integrating. <laughs> integrating. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know this, yeah. It's, um, yeah, so um, I would be revisiting this again next week. Next week, I'll talk about another way. Thank you. Because this is a, this is from NLP point of view. It's called, there is an NLP technique that is called pass integration. And that's what I learned. And now I know other things that can work as well. It may not be as straightforward as the NLP one, however, <laughs> it's a newer technique. So new to new tool. New tool. Or really, however, really interesting. You know, you know, this the the NLP technique, it works as well. It definitely works as well. So play with this past integration and um, and then we'll go more deeper into it next week. Perfect. Thank you. I think uh, maybe the identify is it's more difficult for <laughs> You know, if we can identify, maybe it's that that first step is a little bit. <laughs> um, observe yourself. It makes it easier to identify. That's that's what I. Oh. That's my experience is. If like if if somebody asks me, you know, what parts do you have? You know, all of a sudden you're like, uh, I have no idea. Yeah, like me <laughs> first. Like, most people would draw a blank, a blank. So, um, but if you really observe yourself, you would notice that um, unless you are, you know, very put together and integrated person, but most people would. If you really start to observe yourself, you would start to notice that there are inconsistencies. Like you want something, mm -hmm. but you also don't want something. You would start to see these or notice these inconsistencies. You know mm -hmm. you have a part when you want one thing, but you also don't want one thing. Or you want one thing, but whatever it is you're doing is creating exactly the opposite result. Then you know that there is a part that is not allowing you. Mm. So that's how you notice the part. So observe yourself, 
Um, and when you truly observe yourself, you will start to notice the inconsistencies. And should you choose to, then you can use this method of identifying and really noticing what's the reason for that part to happen. And then you can do the integration. Is it possible that it will take some time, that there will be some um, habits that have been formed? That, that even though you've integrated, it will take a little bit of time before it sort of ceases? <laughs> of course, because um, human beings, we like, or at least I like anyways, I like rituals. Like in the morning, I need my cup of tea. If I don't have my cup of tea and you talk to me, you wouldn't like me very much. <laughs> you may not get a response out of me. But <laughs> so, yes, we have certain behavior that we are, you know, we kind of stuck in. And when we do the parts integration, then, yeah, um, there are certain behavior that will still be there. However, um, if you truly um, choose to integrate that, then those behavior will start to loosen up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Should we do that part integration once, or is we supposed to do it until it's going to work? Um, I would do it once first and give it a couple of weeks and see what happens if you are happy with the results okay so give it some time and then the next if you find that okay yeah i've done the integration but somehow there is still something that is not quite working then you opt you kind of notice so it will have changed but has it changed enough then you work on it again so don't try to do it back to back and say okay i'm gonna do it 10 times until it <laughs> give it time <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> okay yeah, sure. Perfect. Now we got the homework, so I'll yeah. try again. <laughs> big homework, big homework. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big homework. Okay. Well, I hope you guys play around with it and um, and notice. And if you have any questions, we'll take it up next week. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.